Okay, so hopefully that's working. Um, it's Friday, October the 7th, and we are looking at 1 Peter 5 today. Um, hope you guys have been able to join me. Sorry, we're going a little bit late today. Um, I was at work. We just got in the door. Um, and so um, I was in our way and got behind every tractor and roadworks and everything else. So I'm here now and we will get started. Okay. Um, hopefully some of you guys from Florida will tune in. Hope everything's okay. Haven't seen any news today. Um, so I don't know how things are going. If any of you guys know um, what's happening with the hurricane, you can let me know. Um, we'll keep praying for Florida and the East Coast. So, hi Alex. So, hi Avril. Good morning, my friend. <laughs> so, um, we're looking at First Peter 5 today. Um, hi Cindy, glad to think everything's okay there. I just see everything's okay there. Um, that's good stuff. Um, hopefully it will stay that way. Has it got any worse weather-wise in Florida? Is it still just rain? I don't know. Um, so let's get stuck in. If you have your Bibles, um, we'll start 1 Peter 5, verse um, 1. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of, of glory. Um, let's just start there with those couple of verses. Um, when he's talking about elders among you, um, I think from what I read, it was it was basically the leaders of the church. Um, he's instructing them. Um, there's a lot in the Bible about shepherding. Um, Jesus refers to himself a lot as a shepherd, as a good shepherd. Um, and, you know, there's some things that have been lost in time. You know, um, the shepherd would have um, risked his life for his sheep. He would have re wrestled bears and lions and uh, whatever for his sheep. Um, I don't know if Farmer Brown down the road today would actually go head to head with a bear if one of his flock was in danger. I don't know. I live in a farming community. I don't know. I don't know. But Jesus would. Um, but one of the things that I thought was really cool, you know, when Jesus says that he he's the good shepherd and he's the, he's the gate. He, he talks about himself being a gate in shepherding terms. Um, the area that the sheep would have been kept in, you know, overnight or whatever, the pen would have had three sides, three fences. And then there would be an opening because the shepherd himself became the gate. The shepherd lay across that gap at night and he he protected the sheep. So he himself became the, the gate. To me, that's pretty amazing because that's literally how Jesus sees himself for us. He laid, laid down his life for us, for our protection, for our um, for our safety. So um, and then he talks, uh, the, the writer talks a lot about um serving willingly you know exercising oversight um being the you know we're supposed to be good shepherds we're supposed to be good leaders um i don't know if any of you guys are leaders in your community or in your church or in, in bosses in your workplace um good morning Emer. good morning priscilla um you know it's really easy to just skim over this stuff and and say yes our leaders are supposed to be kind and good to us and you know, caring about us. But what about the people that we also lead? You know, do we expect the same of ourselves that we expect from our bosses and our leaders? And, you know, sometimes it's really, sometimes we're really far too rough on ourselves, tough on ourselves. We, we're harder on ourselves than God is, you know. But other times we let things slide in our lives that we wouldn't be willing to let slide in somebody else's. And I just think, you know, we should really look at our own leadership in our family, in our church, in our workplace, and um, in our our schools, colleges, everything else, that we should look at um, how we are representing Jesus as a, as a good shepherd. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had some bad bosses. Anybody else ever had a really bad boss? And 
the thing is, I want to learn from all that, not to ever be the bad boss, you know, to remember how certain things felt um, and just, you know, honor each other, honor people, respect people. Um, so let's see. Verse five. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Um, humble is a word that we don't really use that much. But at the end of the day, if we're humble, we look for the best in other people. We'll give the benefit of the doubt to other people. Um, we'll try to see from their perspective. And we'll sort of feel like it's not actually all about me all the time. You know, I'm not the centre of the universe. And... Um, because that person or those people have hurt my feelings doesn't mean that I have understood the situation properly. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think just if we're humble um, before God, it just takes care of so much, so much stuff. So um, again, he says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Um, the proper time. So that at the proper time, he he may exalt us. Is the proper time um, in my eyes the same as God's proper time? I don't know, because, I mean, I would have said the proper time for Jesus to return would have been a long, long time ago. You know, he has other other things in mind. Um, God knows what he's doing. And so when things don't happen in our timing or what we think is the proper timing, you know, that's OK. We just we've got to trust him and, and keep going and trust that in his proper time, he will take care of things. Um, sometimes I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like a tiny ant and I just wonder how or why, you know, God would care about all the little details of my life. Um, you know, we're, we're talking here about um, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And, you know, sometimes our, our the stuff that's going on in our lives, I mean, sometimes I think it's even too petty to pray about. I'm just like, God's well, not going to care about this. It's just, I don't even really care about this. But, you know, he really does care. And I've seen it in so many, so many little ways. You know, he does things that just blows your mind and you're like, wow, God actually really knows what makes me tick and he knows what I care about and he cares. And it just, it, it's it's unbelievable sometimes. I'll tell you a wee story about my six-year-old. Um, so Joshua, well, he was five when this happened and he, he has um, a Kindle that he just, um, he loves to play Angry Birds racing. Okay, Angry Birds go on this Kindle. And something happened with it when he first got the Kindle that every the game started over from scratch and he lost all the diamonds that he had earned and, and all this the, the stuff, you know, the points and everything. Hi Deborah. Hi Julie. Um and so poor Joshua was devastated here. He had worked really hard to to save all these diamonds because he was gonna, you know, buy himself a car on this game and it was all gone. So a few months later, and a similar situation was happening with the Kindle where it was doing that in a lot of the games and he was starting to have a bit of a panic. Oh no, all my diamonds are going to be lost again. And when it came to the Angry Birds Go um, game and we had to reset it or whatever, I was really like concerned about, about it because he was really worried about it. And so we decided to pray. And Josh and I just prayed um, a simple prayer that God would save his diamonds and we did the whatever we needed to do with the game and unlike the previous times when he turned his game back on all his diamonds were there and do you know that was a life-changing moment for that five-year-old boy all of a sudden God wasn't just this idea that mommy and daddy talk about God was real to him where it mattered to him and he was all, you know, God is my diamond saver. God is his diamond saver. That is God's name in this, this little boy's heart. God is his diamond saver. That next day, he went to school and told all his friends about what God did and saved his, his diamonds. And then not only that, 
he went around praying for his friends who were sick. He had a little boy in his class who, who wasn't feeling well. And he said, hey, can I pray for you? And the kid was healed. Five-year-old praying for a five-year-old with no adult compulsion or, you know, encouragement or anything. Because his heart changed that day. God saw him and he realized that. And, um, you know, God is our diamond saver. That's right. He is. And, you know, Josh has never been the same since. His He actually has a relationship with God now. He understands that, that it's between him and God. It's not, you know, we're not his priests, you know. So every little detail, everything that we worry about, everything that we get anxious about, God does care. Amazingly. Like, it blows my mind, but he cares. So, hi, Gina. Hi, Cindy. Cindy says, that is awesome about your son turned him into a disciple. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Alex says, um, faith of a child, love it. Yeah. And David says, go God. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, uh, it just, yeah, that stuff blows my mind. God does stuff like this all the time. It's just, you're like, how can you care so much? And Deborah says, and we are God's diamonds. That's right. That is right. So let's go on. Verse eight says, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Um, Gina says, yes, he fully he's fully involved in our day to day lives. He's a good father and the best friend. Yep, so true. So true. Um, so this this says. Be watchful, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. It's really hard to get a balance. You know, um, we can either be, oh, the devil's in everything and everything that happens is because the devil made it happen or because God let it happen or, you know, this sort of thing. And, you know, for a start, there's stuff that just happens. It's, there just is. There are such, there are such tragedies in the world and sometimes it's just, it's happened it's not that god has made it happen to teach us something or let it happen it's not that the devil was out to get us that day it was just we're living in a fallen world and sometimes stuff just happens um on the other hand the devil is probably around like a roaring lion trying trying to destroy us so we have to bear that in mind but he's not under every bush he's not behind every door you know and our god is stronger and it says here in these verses that we can resist him. Good morning, Tricia. Um, we can resist him. God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us tools to resist. If you look at Ephesians, um, I think it's chapter 6, um, about the armour of God. Is it Ephesians 5 or 6? I can't remember. I think it's 6. Um, and we're instructed to put on the helmet of salvation <clears throat> and take up the shield of faith and... <clears throat> Where the feet fitted with the with the gospel of peace and use the sword of the spirit. I mean, there's um, five or six things that we're told to, to put on there, and that's part of um, what God has given us in order to resist. Okay, we've got to guard our minds. Wear the helmet of salvation. Guard your mind. Um, use the shield of faith. There, um, there's a there's a guy who uh, Dark Prince. If you've heard of Dark Prince, um, when I was very young in the Lord, um, somebody gave me a bookmark with um, the different elements of the, the armour of God and just uh, relating verses to those and also how to pray those back over ourselves. And I did that for years. I stuck that thing, taped it up on the bedroom wall. It's the first thing I did every day. I woke up and I prayed that stuff. And, you know, even just praying it back gets it in your spirit that you start to understand the power and the authority that God has given you. And I really encourage you, you know, go to those verses in Ephesians and learn them. It doesn't take much to learn them off by heart. And, you know, remind yourself daily, remind yourself daily of who you are. Emer says, um, so true, our God is greater than anything we have, we have to face today. Yeah, he is. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with what's going on in our lives um, that we forget he is bigger. Cindy says, the more we seek Jesus, the less power Satan has over us. Yep. It's nearly like the more time you spend in the presence of God, it's like 
I mean, for me personally, I feel like it's nearly a bubble of protection around me. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like the 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 darts that the enemy flow throws at me can't get through because I'm in in a different wavelength. You know, the more time I spend with the Lord, the more um the other stuff of the world, the stuff that the enemy tries to taunt me with and all that, it doesn't have any effect because I know who I am. Um Deborah says, yes, and the devil cannot read our minds or hearts. Only God has that power and reach. We must guard our minds with the truth. We give Satan power he does not have. Um, but dress ourselves because we are in a fallen world. Yeah, we do. We give Satan far more power than, than he actually has. Um, we must guard our minds. We must guard our minds. And... Is there a harder thing to do? Really? I mean, I would say in our flesh, that is like the hardest thing to do. Because especially in this day and age where, with media, I mean, there's just stuff bombarding our brains all day long, all day long. And, you know, I'm really convicted because like I, I am one of those people that would um, spend far too much time on Facebook or returning texts or that sort of thing. And I need to just put it, put the phone away and have like, I need to have screen time limitations for myself, not just for my kids, you know, um, because even all that stuff, like even if you're just reading the news, it's so depressing and so distracting from our present, you know. And yes, we need to know what's going on around us because we need to be able to pray effectively for different situations, but we can't just be immersed in the technology technology of the world and all the stuff that's flying at us from every direction we're not really giving the holy spirit a chance to renew our minds because we're just filling our heads with so much other stuff um deborah says dress ourselves with the armor <laughs> thanks for that reminder yeah yeah we must we must um do you know your sheet the shield of faith is also a weapon you would definitely know this if you lived in northern ireland Okay, I wish I had a clip I could put on here. In Northern Ireland, um, the riot officers have a shield, okay? That shield, I suppose in a way it's kind of like the Roman shield where it's really long and um, probably the same as, as American riot police, I don't know. But that shield, the, those guys are trained to use that as a weapon and it can break bones, Okay. Um, that thing is dangerous. It's not just a, oh, let me hide behind the shield. It is a weapon too. Okay, our faith is a weapon. So let's see. <clears throat> Verse 10. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. Um, you know, suffering is a temporary state okay um it's it doesn't last forever sometimes you know people say that labor is the worst pain going through childbirth is the worst pain that you're ever going to go through don't stone me for this and like childbirth is pretty miserable but i think toothache is worse because you don't know if it's ever going to end right at least with labor you know there is an end in sight. There will be some end to this day, whether it even takes two or three days, you know, there will be a point where it's done. But when you have other illnesses and other pains, it, you know, you don't know. But this says that we will suffer a little while. It is temporary. It's not going to last forever. Whatever your circumstances are, they will not last forever, whether that's here whether it will change here, whether it's in heaven, I don't know. But suffering is not forever. It's a temporary state. Tricia says, um, we do the things in our hearts and, and what we think in our minds. By staying within God's word, we have our armor on to protect ourselves. We've got to stay in the word. Um, Deborah says, love that. Alex says, no, you Irish are more violent. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Probably true. No, it's not true. We love people. We're the friendliest people in the world. Come on. It's funny when my kids are always asking me what is 
dangerous in this country. You know, they would say, um, do we have bears? Do we have alligators? Do we have wolves? All these things. Like, no, no, no. And I really, sometimes I just want to tell them, the only thing you need to be afraid of in this country is people. But that's probably the same across the world. People are probably the most dangerous um, animals, mammals, whatever, that exist. So no, Alex, we are not any more violent than anyone else. So um, the other thing in this is that the writer saying that um, he who, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish. Um, that is basically saying, acknowledging, you know, we're not going to get it right all the time because we, we will need restored. There are times that we do need restored. Um, we don't always get it right. And I think when we can um, come to terms with that um, and just keep getting up and moving on and, and learning from our mistakes, we probably will be a lot happier and a lot more at peace with ourselves because like Leah was saying yesterday, you know, um, when when your kids or other circumstances push you to that edge where you just, you're not proud of yourself for how you reacted to a situation, um, the key is to, to not just stop there. You know, you, you keep going, you keep learning, you keep growing, you keep asking God to help you to get through. Um, but we're just not always going to get it right. We're not unfortunately. So um, verses 11 to 14. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with the kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Okay, so the last thing, go around kissing everybody because we're told to. No. <laughs> it's awesome how the writer actually just sends such warm greetings, you know, that we are supposed to, we're supposed to love each other, not just put up with each other. And um, But I love this peace, peace to all of you here in Christ. And here in Northern Ireland, we say goodbye, see you later, just like everybody else. We also say cheerio, okay? I don't know where it came from. It didn't come from the cereal. Cheerio came first, and then the cereal. Um, but we say cheerio. And I think instead of saying cheerio, I would love to have the confidence just to say, you know, peace, peace to you, peace be with you. Um, because that, you know, that blessing that blessing is what we need. We need peace in this world. We need to, to walk with confidence in who Christ has made us to be and not be stressing and anxious about everything else that's going on. We need peace. So I'm going to pray that over you right now. Hold on a wee second. Deborah says, um, that's so good. We don't always get it right. We sure, we sure don't. But to keep going because this too will pass. Yeah. And David says, glory. <laughs> okay, so let's pray. Father, I just pray um, that today you would release peace into our lives, that each of us today would walk in true peace, um, that we would be able to remember that um, sufferings and um, pain and situations don't last forever, um, that our suffering is a temporary state, that, that you say that after we've suffered a little while, that you will, will will restore us, you'll confirm us, you'll strengthen us, you'll establish us. And I pray for that strengthening and establishing today and that restoration today for each of us, especially anybody who feels like they have um, let themselves down or um, failed in a certain area, Lord, that you would, um, that you would give um, strength, that you would bring restoration, that you would confirm your love and establish us in your word. Um, and I pray for our friends in Florida that you would protect them and their property and um, that this, this hurricane would just dissipate into nothing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, you guys. We will see you Monday. All right. God bless.